small milestone in Germany today as the first flows of liquefied natural gas have entered the country's gas network. It's happening via, via a new LNG terminal, the country's first, and courtesy of this ship, the Hug Esperanza, lovely name. It's all happening here in Wilhelmshaven on Germany's North, Co North Sea coast. And that's where the ship, the central part of the terminal, will convert the delivered LNG back to its gaseous state. And the floating terminal in Wilhelmshaven is connected to the natural gas network in Germany via a 26 kilometer pipeline. And the pipeline costs around 150 million euros and can deliver around 6% of Germany's natural gas supply needed in a year. And right now it's just in test phase. Full operation is expected in January. Let's learn more about this with Michael Sterner. He's professor for energy storage and energy systems at the Technical University OTH Regensburg. Michael, great to have you on the show. Uh, first flows, we've had multiple milestones with this terminal. The fact it was completed. Uh, now we have a ship that's there and now we have the first flows going in. Give us some sense of how important this actually is for where we are in this crisis. It's definitely very meaningful to Germany as we really struggle to get more independent from Russian energy imports. So that's definitely a milestone and, and I'm really happy that it happened that fast. Uh, but yeah, that's bridging us for some years, but it's not the final solution, definitely. It also, um, there's also going to be issues getting gas on the open markets, I imagine. This doesn't necessarily solve that, does it? The price of gas, as we've seen, can be very erratic. Yeah, it's, that's definitely uh, the case because um, the competition is quite high on gas and gas supply. And so this gives us an opportunity to have more access to liquid uh, natural gas markets, which we didn't have so far because we were so reluctant on this toxic cheap energy from Russia. But uh, it, it's really... So, so from the environmental point of view, it's not the best case. But um, in terms of economy, of course, we need this independence in supply security. That's why it's an important step for Germany. You mentioned the environmental aspect. Natural gas has always been part of the plan to move to renewables. It was supposed to be a bridging uh, fuel. Does the construction of all of these LNG terminals, there are multiple that are going to be constructed. Some are almost done right now. Does this make that transition more difficult because it creates this kind of, uh, obviously, a, a terminal for gas? Or does it make it easier because some of this infrastructure can be used for hydrogen, from what I understand? Well, um, we wouldn't have phased out of uh, fossil energy from, from Russia that fast without this war. Uh, so definitely it was in the plan to phase out, but not that fast. So it's just substituting here uh, fossil energy. But uh, of course, we have to have the frameworks like the emission trading system in Europe, which has just been extended to heating systems and also transport. Um, and and it, it's, it's a bridge. But I, I'm not in favor of making contracts with Qatar starting in 26, for lasting for 15 years. This is really co contrary to our climate goals. But you're right, definitely. We can use some of that influence infrastructure to uh, import renewable mm. energy. So in form of ammonia, where, where we have 150 mm. habers worldwide, many ships. We, But it's not fitting for green hydrogen. Uh, it would fit for green LNG. You can do green LNG via power to gas. And that's uh, competitive and uh, technically and economically feasible compared to LNG imports from Qatar. So we should definitely look and create new energy partnerships which have our values, which really can import then green energy in whatever form, uh, but mainly molecules, mm. and LNG, in LNG, so it's it's definitely doable, and because there I, should be the focus. I want to break in. I'm sorry. I want to break in. I want to ask you before we run out of time. The approval process right. and the construction of this it lasted only 10 months. Uh, that's light speed by German right. regulatory standards. Um, it's often been said right. that it would be nice to have this for renewable approvals, for wind turbines, for uh, solar cells. Does this set a precedent? Briefly, if you can. No, it doesn't. We, we have this in vaccinations and we saw many light speeds, but not in energy transition. We definitely need this for climate action to accelerate wind and solar and so on. And if you compare it to Corona, uh, the money we spent for Corona, Corona would definitely last uh, to have a complete transition towards climate neutrality worldwide. So that's the good news. Mm -hmm. It does be it's feasible and it's doable, but we need acceleration from the permission side, definitely, All right. especially for wind. Mikhail Sterner, professor at the Technical University, OTH Regensburg. Thank you so much. Thank you.